Okay, so for tonight, what uh, John and I are going to be demonstrating are bullseye turning supply makes or has recently came out or come out with these kits. Now I say that they're kits, but they're not really kits. They're not like the kit that you would normally see. When you normally think of a pen kit, You think about something along these lines, where you get the tubes, you get the components, you get the section, you get the clip, you get all the goodies to make the pen. In this particular kit, what you get for a roller ball is you get a spring, the refill, and the section that goes into the body of the blank and the section of the roller ball. Um, for the fountain, same thing, except you get, a, uh, you get the converter, the ink converter, the section that goes into the body of the blank and the number five Bach nib. Now these kits are uh, oh, I'm sorry. And you also get the cap insert. And we'll show you that in just a second. Um, I lost my train of thought. So that's really what you get with the, um, with the kits for these. Oh, and they also come in... Um, this one is, of course, stainless steel, and they also come in solid brass. Uh, these are the Apollo 180 kits. Uh, as of now, have you got yours yet? Okay. They're coming out with um, what they call the Artemis kits. Same concept, except uh, for these Apollo, they use a number five Bach nib, and for the Artemis that's gonna be coming out soon, is gonna be using the number six block nib. So they're a little bit larger, which, uh, which appeals to a lot of people. In fact, I like a larger uh, pen myself. These are a little bit uh, small for my taste, but um, I like putting them together. I like playing with them. Um, let me just go ahead with a disclaimer that we're not paid by Bullseye Turning Supply. Uh, we're not getting any compensation for this. We're just a big fan of the kits. Uh, if you go to Bullseye Turning Supplies website, you will get you can download the instructions for these. Um, if there's one thing that I would recommend that's not in the instructions uh, is to dry fit everything. Now I'm probably going to be saying that several times this evening, but definitely dry fit everything. You can also uh, download and print out their tips where they've uh, kind of built onto the instructions. And in fact, tonight uh, I'm going to show you how I deviate from the instructions just a little bit as well. <clears throat> and the reasons why I do that. So um, like I mentioned, uh, they're available from Burl's Eye Turning Supply, solid brass, stainless steel. And um, the reason I like them is because they allow for freedom uh, you're not restricted like you are with a normal kit uh, because you can uh, you have your freedom to put accent bands if you wanted to uh, turn a, uh, a tenon for a clip. <clears throat> this is the first that I turned, uh, the first of this kit that I've turned. It's stainless steel roller ball, and the cap fits on just like this. And what I found is you can see the hardware between the cap and the body. And in order to prevent that from happening, the inset needs to be set in just a little bit inside the cap. We'll go over that just a little bit, but this is, this is the first one I did. I love it. In fact, this is my, well, this is, I write with this every, every day. That's, that, that's my pen now. Um, but I've, I've made some, adjustments to the instructions. <clears throat> what, what this, what this uh, new style pen does 
is it provides you with a, a, a purpose-built closed-end pen system. So you don't have to use pin chucks or uh, other types of chucks to make a closed-end pen from a standard kit. It's just everything is, uh, is, is designed from the ground up as a closed-end pen. Now there are um, in a normal in a normal pin kit, you've got the two tubes, or one or a single tube pin, um, and you drill straight through the blank. You insert the tube, and you uh, this is the uh, cap tube. So you have a clip going this side, the uh, threaded insert on this side for the body. You'd have the section, and then the posted end. This being a um, I think this is Junior George. Yeah, Junior George Fountain. <clears throat> So in this particular one, instead of using one size drill bit or two sizes of drill bits, you're actually going to be using five drill bits, five, five different sizes, actually six different sizes. Um, these are all laid out in the instructions, uh, but you're going to need a quarter inch, five sixteenths, 23 sixty fourths, three eighths, 29 sixty fourths. And then the last one, which is not in the instructions, but it is on the tips page is a small drill bit and you see that um, but the small drill bit has a specific purpose is you can drill a hole in the top of the cap inset um, to let air escape when you epoxy this into the blank and we'll go into that shortly <clears throat> you're going to need a collet chuck with a 3 h inch collet uh, you're going to need epoxy I use 30 minute epoxy. You're welcome to use five, 15, 30 minute epoxy. <clears throat> I just, regardless of what epoxy I use, I let it sit overnight. Uh, that's just a rule of thumb that I have. You're gonna need the uh, mandrels. And uh, the mandrels, let me get this off of here. These are the Apollo 180, oh, there you go. Apollo 180 mandrels, you get one for the cap and one for the body two different sizes. Uh, you're gonna need a live center on your uh, tailstock. Your pin blank, and this is uh, kind of crucial here, your pin blank needs to be at least six inches long. Um, most pin blanks are five and a quarter, which yeah, rules. Uh, those manuals, do those manuals work with all of their pen kits or are they specialized? They work for just this one Apollo 180 kit. If you go to the Artemis, you're going to need the um, mandrels for that particular kit. Yeah. But anyway, I, I, I mean, they're, they're reasonably priced. Um, back to the pin blanks, you're going to need at least a six inch pin blank. Uh, and it's recommended uh, to use either stabilized wood or acrylics. I think if you went into some some a type of wood that wasn't stabilized, some of the parts on on these pins get really thin, and there's no tubes behind it to um, to help support the material. So resin, hybrid, or stabilized or stabilized wood. <clears throat> the other thing that I highly recommend that you use is a set of calipers, uh, and you're going to need. Uh, Pin jaws on your chuck, or another, or, or or call it something, a way to drill in the lathe. I don't think you could get, um, I don't think you could get as precise by drilling on a drill press. <clears throat> the last thing is Q-tips, and we'll get into that whenever um, whenever we go to epoxy. So again, we're not being paid or compensated by Bullseye Turning Supply. And you're going to hear the name Diamond Cast a lot. We're not being paid or compensated by them as well, but we're just real big fans of their blanks. Uh, this particular one is called Smoke on the Water. It's a beautiful pen blank. Uh, his Tim McKenzie's pen blanks, these Diamond Cast, they come in six and one eighth inch, which is almost perfect for one of these pens. Um, if you've ever <clears throat> If you've ever 
used a pen blank that has a slick side like this. This was cast in a PVC tube with uh, the stoner release. So it's very slick on the outside. And with a Sharpie, it's impossible to mark. Or it, it's, it's very hard to get a mark on that. Took me a little while to figure this out. But if you take a piece of 120 sandpaper, you can scuff that enough to where you're able to make marks on your cut lines. And they'll stay there. They won't rub off like they would if you didn't use the, the scuff. So what I've done is I've taken another one of uh, a diamond cast blank. And what I do, now let me back up. What I do is I take two and a half inches and I mark two and a half inches. This is going to be my cap side. And then I take three and a half from the other end and I make another mark. And what I'm left with is two lines here. Let me get that in front of the camera. Two lines there, and that is going to be where I cut. That's going to be my curve marks. So what I've already done is I've already cut one of the blanks along the marks. <clears throat> and just to keep me from, or to help keep me from getting confused, I put little marks on there. So I know that this is the cap and this is the where, the, where I'm gonna drill and to maintain grain continuity, continue whatever that word is. Continuity. Continuity, thank you. Um, put another mark on the, on the body side and I'm gonna be drilling into that part. Um, one reason I do that is, like I said, to help get me conf keeping me from getting confused. But if you're dealing with a blank, and this is just for example, this is a little bit more than six inches. But if you're dealing with a blank that's say eight inches, you would need a way to determine that this particular area is where your cut line was. And this one, this may be five or six inches long from the backside. You're gonna need to make another cut at three and a half. You're gonna have two sets of bandsaw marks on either side of the body blank. And you would need to um, mark a witness mark on that side of the blank. <clears throat> in most cases, you want to drill where you've made the cut, rather than at the other, rather than the other ends. Yeah. Now, um, a little quick tip: uh, these are diamond cast round blanks. Tim also sells diamond cast kitless blanks, which are about nine inches long. So if you get one of those. They're a little bit thinner, but again, they're nine inches long. You have enough to make one of these uh, a regular pin, and then you've got enough left over at the back end to make some uh, Sierra style pin kit. Um, and they're only like two or $3 more than just a round blank. So <clears throat> we have cut this. We're gonna start drilling, and I'm gonna start with the body side the body part of the blank. So according to the instructions, we start out with a quarter inch bit. What I've done is I have marked three inches on this drill bit which is right here. And that's how deep we need to drill this blank. So let me tighten this uh, drill bit in. And what I do on my lathe, yours may be different, but this is the way that I do it on this lathe, is I use my hands on the tailstock. I got a lot of slop in this. This is an older lathe. And what I do is I ease it up 
until I'm just making contact with the blank. And now I've got, now I found center. Now I lock it down and I'm drilling. And I know that I'm drilling straight because there's absolutely no wobble in the bit. Now I'll drill probably about that far. Squeaky for. Yeah. You drill till it start you drill till it squeaks. And ease it back up again. Now I have had it catch in here, so I have to be careful to get back in there, back where I stopped drilling. Drill a little bit more. And I try to drill like like twice like that to get about an inch, inch and a half into the blank. And what I do from this point is I use a barrel trimmer. Make sure that's on camera. Yeah. Okay. Use a barrel trimmer and I put that in my chuck because this end that I'm drilling is not square. It was cut on the bandsaw, but it's almost square but I need to make sure that it's perfectly square. So what I wanna do is I wanna ease that up there very carefully, lock it down. And all I wanna do is just take just a shavings off. I don't know if you can hear that, but you can hear it vibrating just a little bit. And you do that until it stops vibrating. I'll back that off. See the bandsaw marks? I want to make sure that all of those are gone. So I need to go just a little bit more. Well, John's doing that. Another option is also to put a, um, a sanding pad in your chuck. And you can sand that uh, square with a sanding pad as well. And now the sanding marks, the, the bandsaw marks are gone. I'm going to go back to the quarter inch drill bit and we're going to finish drilling three inches. And these drill bits will get hot, so uh, John's got uh, asbestos fingers, but I use my wife's toothbrush to clean off all that stuff. I, is there a reason why you squared the end before you finished drilling all the way through? Yes. Because, well, first of all, you don't want to drill through the blank. You only want to drill three oh, inches. Because you have closed end, right? Okay. Yeah, it's a, but I, I squared the end because I want to go three inches exactly from where I squared the bit. It wasn't square before, so if I'd have drilled three inches in and then squared it, my three inch hole is going to be less than three inches. Oh, I but, get it. Okay. Yeah. But um, like John, like John said, you know, I use my hands, but every once in a while, I'll use my wife's toothbrush. If she sees this video, I'm dead. I'll send her a copy. <laughs> I appreciate that, Joe. <laughs> Luckily, you know, you're only drilling at 400 RPM here, and you're only using these drill bits one time. So they don't get that hot, especially if you're able to clear the flutes as often as I do, because you just don't want that blank to get too hot and these shavings to start melting in there. So there's three, there's three inches for the quarter inch. <clears throat> Next thing on the list is a five sixteenths. 
and we're going to drill two and a quarter. And for some reason, I've got two marks on this drill bit. I need to make sure which one I'm talking, which one I need. First one, okay. Find out critical. Yeah. This little break tool that uh, John is using is really helpful for a variety of things. Um, so uh, I think this is something I highly recommend. I, I use this all the time. Joe, did you have a question? Yeah, I do. Uh, the drill bits, uh, the di diameter of the drill bits is pretty critical. And I know if you buy drill bits at Harbor Freight, they may not be what they're supposed to be. Uh, I assume it's pretty critical that you get the, exactly the right size drill bits. Yes, and before I use these, well, disclosure here, these are Harbor, Fit, Harbor Freight drill bits. Um, I got the Harbor Freight drill bits because two of the drill bits that are needed for this kit are special. I do, they're specialized. I couldn't find them in any standard kit. So if you go to Harbor Freight, you can get the a set of drill bits. I think there's like 114 drill bits in the kit. Well, you can take five out of that uh, out of that kit, put the other 109 aside, and just use these five for these this particular kit. I use the Norseman bits, which are a little bit better. Um, they cost a whole hell of a lot more, though. And then you can actually sharpen them. So what I do on my second is I ease it up, let that get the start in the hole. I guess it would help to lock the drill bit. But to answer your question, yes, it is real. It is critical the sizing of the holes. See that? It grabbed on me. Uh, either one. The, the the neat thing about these about the, about these kits is that they're both drilled the same, whether you do roller ball or a uh, fountain. And I caught that before it grabbed. Now, do you ever use any water at all on your drill bits if you're drilling uh, uh, stuff? Any water? It's no. Lubricant. Oh, no. I, I know that some exist, but no, I, I never use it. And there's two and a quarter. So we will back that out. What was that handy little measuring device called? It's a uh, Craig Multimark. Thanks. And like John said, it's, it's invaluable. I use this probably more than any ruler that I have out here in the, in the garage. Yeah, as soon as I saw you using that, I was like, I had my eye on it because those it it's hard to hold a little ruler up to a pen blank and do One anything. One side of the ruler is standard, the other side is metric. So our last hole on here will be a 23 60 fourths. And it goes an inch and a quarter. Make sure my lines are marked. Is that right? Inch and a quarter. Yeah. Okay. I guess you saw that. I went too far with it. Ease it in there and let it level out. There we go. All right. 
Now we can drill. Let it grab on me. I guess that's what you get for having sharp drill bits from Harbor Freight, nonetheless. Okay. One thing I would not recommend with these um, acrylic or any kind of a rosin blank is using a um, uh, frag point bit. I would use jobber bits completely on these. So this particular one, and like I said, the, the instructions are the same for either rollerball or fountain. But for this particular one, I'm going to use the fountain converter. I've got it. I want to put it in the section. And like I said before, make sure you dry fit everything. And I'm bottoming out for some reason. This is, <laughs> this is why you dry fit everything. So on the calipers, This is about uh, two point, that's uh, 2 2.95, which is three inches. Yeah, not I'm not there. Let's go back to the quarter inch. And we got a good fit. So we will pull this out. Now I've drilled three inches into it. So let me put this one. I've drilled three inches into the blank. So on the back side of the blank, you're going to be left with a little bit over half an inch to play with from that mark. So the next thing we will do is we'll do the cap. We'll set the body to the side. And we will go with the This is why I'm on it. One of these days, I'm going to get a, a keyless Jacobs chuck. One of these days. So we start out with a 3 8 inch drill bit for the, the first one for the cap. And we want to drill this one. Two inches or a little bit over two inches. Now, <clears throat> this is where I deviate a little bit from the instructions that it comes with, and I'll explain why. What I want to do is I want this cap in set to fit inside the blank. Let's see if I zoom 
to fit inside the blank, leaving a little bit of overhang of about an eighth of an inch or five thirty seconds. If you only drill 1.8 inches into the blank, which is what the instructions call for, the inset is just shy of 1.8 inches. So what that's going to do, it's going to leave the inset about right there. And what will happen is that when you put the pin together, you're going to be faced with, you'll be able to see the hardware. Now on this particular one, like I said, this is the first one. It's got a, it's got a hangover. I would probably say maybe a 16th, a little bit more than a 16th. And I, I can see the hardware. So that's what I want to try to avoid. And the only way I know how to do that is to inset this cap an eighth of an inch or five thirty seconds further into the blank, which means that I drill 2.05 instead of 1.8 per the instructions. John, is there any reason why you're not facing that off before you start to drilling like you did on the body you can uh that's a good point you can but i don't have what it would need to do that what i i mean i use the the barrel trimmer just because it's what i have now i think you could probably sand that sand it flat before you started drilling but this works for me you could probably, it, as long as that, as long as this is flat or, or square and true to the rest of the blank, then by all means, go ahead and do that. But it needs to, it definitely needs to be square to the, uh, square to the blank. Get that up there. Get that in there good. I'm going to go ahead and stop there, pull that out. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the barrel trimmer. Now you could square these blanks up before you drill them, like um, on your disc sander, as long as you've got the ability to um, square it up true at 90 degrees. I just found that this way works for me. Make sure I don't have any bandsaw marks. Nope, we're good. So yes, I will agree that this is a little redundant and time consuming. Just square your blanks up this way, but it, it works. Okay.
So that's three eighths. The next one is 29 60 fourths. And on this one, the instructions say to drill, I think it's 1.05 and I drill 1.25. So there's my mark. Let me uh, double check it. Yeah. Let me zoom out. So I'll try to get this in here where you can see it, but there's my mark right there on the drill bit, which is just shy, which is just on the other side of the Sharpie. Well, uh, you can't see it on camera. I can't get it. But as long as I drill to that line and a little bit past, I think I'm good. And this is where I say dry fit everything. So where did that cap go? So the last drill bit you use is the little 1 16th. I'd say it's 1 16th, but you can use whatever. But you just want to put a little hole in the end of that cap to where you, where the, when you insert this into the blank, you're going to have epoxy around the end of this, around this cap inset. And you want to wait for the way for the air to uh, help the air to escape. So the reason, well, let me back up. Let me dry fit this just to make sure that it does fit. Way out of focus. Come on, focus on me. There we go. Okay. So I'm using the mandrel to insert this into the cap. And we'll unscrew it. And as you can see, well, as you, <laughs> there we go. As you can see, we've got about an eighth or 530 seconds before you get to the inset in that cap. And by doing that, when you insert the body of the pin into it, it's gonna hide that hardware, that overhang wheel. Okay. So that's all the drilling. What I like to do here is I like to leave the cap in my uh, drill truck, in my, in, my, in my pin jaws truck. <clears throat> and I'm not gonna go through the process but what you would want to do let me find it where did my fountain pen stuff go okay so what i do from this point is i take my body blank and i take the part of the pen the pen kit that goes inside the body blank and i will mix up some epoxy epoxy around this piece insert it into the blank and you're going to have some squeeze out. So this is when I take a Q-tip and kind of ease that, get that epoxy out from under there just a little bit, mesh it further into the blank, squeeze out a little bit more epoxy, wipe that off with the other end of the Q-tip. And then I use these quick grip clamps put that in there and I'll leave that overnight. That is now epoxied and ready to go. Well, I say it's epoxy, but you know what I mean. 
For the cap portion, what I do is I take my Jacob's chuck and I put the cap mandrel in the Jacob's chuck. If I can tighten it up. Okay. Now I've already dry fitted this cap inset. I'm pleased, I'm, I'm happy with the way that it goes inside and leaves a little bit of overhang at the end of the blank. So what I do is I take either Johnson's paste wax or Renaissance wax or any other kind of wax. And what I do is I wax the end of this mandrel. That's gonna keep the epoxy from sticking to that mandrel. I put the inset on and I leave about an eighth inch or maybe five thirty seconds or a little bit more thread showing. I epoxy the inset and then with the Jacobs chuck in place, this is where the air hole, the air hole that uh, was drilled into the top of that inset comes into play. You're able to push this in here, lock the tailstock down, and again, I would wipe up any squeeze out that happened to pop out on the end of that blank. And once you get it fully inserted, I let that sit overnight, just like that. Um, this is usually the last thing I do in the shop at the night, at the end of the night. I leave it like that, come out the next morning. When I come out the next morning, loosen the mandrel. Sometimes this mandrel may be stuck a little bit, but all it does, all, all it's gonna take is just a quick, uh, just to release it from the, to help release it, just take a pair of pliers, release it from the blank, and you're able to unscrew that out. Now, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna be left with How hard is that to see? Okay. If I can get on the camera right. It's kind of a gunky mess in there. But the way to do the way to address that. Let me take this one out. So this is what this is a blank that I epoxied up in preparation for the demo. Oh, yeah, no, I wanted to do yours. So that way you can turn this one. Get to the, let's go back to this camera. Does that wash it out? I want to get a that little looks, bit. Yeah, that's good. Okay, I, I, I don't. I want to wash it out, but I want to get you a good idea what it looks like in there. Well, what I want to do is I want to clean out that epoxy that's hang that's uh, in that hangover section of the blank. So let me get this out of the way. And what I have, my secret weapon, is this point tool that I made. And it's very simple. All it, all it is is just a, uh, a three-sided point on the end of it. It stays, stays sharp. It's easy to sharpen, too. So I want to kick up the blade speed just a little. And 
and I'm going to do what I can to get that junky mess out of there. Just coming in at a right angle, and I'm just easing it in there until I make contact with the instep. So that is now cleaned up. Um, this is the only time that you're going to be able to get to this portion of the cap blank. So what I would recommend at this point is to go ahead and face this off. I can see a little bit of epoxy spill over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Find my Jacob's chuck again. And I'm just going to square the end of that blank up just a little bit just to get that epoxy off of there. Let me slow this down. I guess it would help if I locked that one out, wouldn't it? Okay, now we are square. We are good to go. It's a little bit dusty in there, as you can probably see, but uh, we're ready to start turning now. And that's where I'm going to turn my part over to Mr. Walsh. Okay. So, can you still hear me okay? Yes. Okay. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to set my tool rest height in the middle. And I'm going to be using the magical skew that's um, a negative rake magical skew from uh, T Shadow Incorporated. On, the, uh, on my acrylic blanks, it's pretty much what I use all the time for, um, for turning these things. It makes it a whole lot easier. John reminded me I need to tail stock support. That's not center at all. No, it's not. Turn it on.
This is um, pretty much standard turning. We're going to use the mandrel as a bushing to mark our our diameter. Okay, at this point, I'm a little bit proud of the uh, bushing, but I want to measure the, see where I am. I want to try to get as even as possible between the front and the back. Still have a little ways to go. If you said I missed it, is that a negative rake carbide cutter? That is a negative rake. The, the cutter itself, let me see if I can get this thing right. Hold on. The cutter head itself, whoop, there we go, has a negative cap to it. Oh, I see, okay. So it's a standard, um, radius uh, cutter, okay. but I think because the head's got a little camp to it, it gives you that negative rake. As, a, okay. as opposed to what Easy Wood Tools has, is they have a negative rake on the actual cutter itself rather than the head. Yeah, yeah, okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Good at the end, but we're a little heavy in the middle, so I'm just going to take a couple more micrometers or millimeters or micromillimeters off in here. Okay. That should be good for the cap as far as the diameters go. Okay, now the dimension, the dis, or blah, 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 blah. this was, um, how long was this again? Three inches. 
no, this one's not three inches. This is the two and a something inches. Oh, is that the cap? This is the cap. Okay. Yeah, over two inches. Okay. Well, yeah. So we're two and two and a half inches right here um, on the, um, the dimension, and we need uh, we have about a half an inch to play with. So I'm going to bring that out a little bit to about there and mark that. And then I'll take. You should have enough to clean up that dimple, and that's about it. Yep. I'll take a Sharpie and mark that area. And that'll give me an idea of what I can do as far as cleanup. Now, I'm going to be using the uh, Easy Wood Tools. Uh, I got to figure out which way I'm going there. There we go. Using the Easy Wood Tools round negative rake to round this off. And because it's the Easy Wood Tools, I, I'm not on center anymore as I was on the T shadow, so I've got to raise this up a little bit to get me back on center. There we go. I got a little bit of their dimple there, so I'll look. Okay. So now what I would do is I would sand this from um, uh, feeling this. I'd probably sand it starting at 240 and go through at least 400, maybe up to about 600 um, using, um, la, 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 using the uh, Abernet. And then from there, I'm not going to do that sanding tonight. You don't need to see sanding. So uh, I would go using the Abernet, and then uh, from the Abernet, I would uh, move on to John's um, clothesline in the back and use the uh, micro mesh, uh, not the pads, but I'd use the micro mesh, micro mesh cloths. And from the micro mesh cloths, I would then use um, the stadium pen blanks. Here we, here we, here we try to get it. How do I get that? Where, where? Uh, stadium pen blanks, magic juice, and go through all six of the, the bottles of the magic juice to give you a immense, a, a fabulous shine on these things. This is that's exactly what I did on those um, um, measuring spoons that I showed earlier. 
the exact same process. Micromesh or uh, Abernet Micromesh Magic Juice. And I do not use wet at all. John, I think, uses wet. Uh, but I don't use any wet at all, and I get a superb shine. Any wet wipe? Any wet uh, micro mesh pads. I'll wet them all. Yeah, John wets them all. I don't. So that's just a, a preference. And mine come out just as shiny as John's does, and I have less less water in my shop than John does. <laughs> oh, <shy>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John's over there eating cookies, think it's saying, telling us that his is shiny. Okay, so that's how I would turn the cap. Um, we need to um, turn the, the, where's your wrenches? Oh. Then turn the um, the body. Let me get this in here. Note that the the uh, mandrel does not come all the way up to the to the thingy dingy. Well, usually you'll, you'll have the mandrel right up to the edge. Oh, I'll see what you mean. Yep. Um, it, it, it's like a bushing. You would have a bushing that would normally come right up to the edge of your blank. That's not the case uh, in this uh, in this scenario. So we'll start turning this one down. This one actually has a dimple in it. Okay. If you unlock the spindle. this just like you would anything else in the spindle orientation, moving your body back and forth, never your hands, your arms, always light cuts, and in this case, high speed. Before I continue on, I want to get a measurement of the the mandrel, so I know where I'm going with the the blank. 
and it, all this beautiful colored um, three, or, uh, ribbons that you get off of these uh, alumilite blanks. Um, you can use those for um, making other blanks if you wish with uh, more alumilite. Almost. Or there. So what I would do for now, for now, I would continue on turning this down to the same uh, diameter as we have here, and then rounding off the end over here. I'm not sure we need to go through that again to see what we're doing or to, to finish this off, but I will put the two tabs together to show you where we are on that. And then um, what I'm gonna end up doing is finishing this whole thing off uh, and then I'll, I'll put it up on Facebook and uh, show everybody how that how it came out. But let's see how the two halves fit together. Okay. Putting these two together. We have our pen. The bottom will look, end up looking just like the top uh, when we're all done. Uh, the blank is called Oil Slick. It's another diamond cast blank. And you can see that uh, there's no hardware showing on that right now. So and that's how we would turn it. Do we have any questions? Thanks for sharing that. Good job, John and John. Thank you. Well, thank They're you. A very interesting kit. I, I like them because they give you the freedom to make them long, make them well. You can only make them just so short. But you can also, on the end of the cap, make an accent band yep. out of a contrasting piece of acrylic. One of the really nice features of this kit. Uh, where did my Spring go. Just had the spring. <laughs> I just lost my spring. That's okay. I've got springs all over the floor. Oh, okay. <laughs> but one of the nice things about this is this comes with a Pilot G2 refill which is one of the best refills on the market for uh, rollerball pens. Um, highly recommend these refills. <laughs> and what you would do to assemble it is you, if we had the spring, you drop the spring in the bottom of the, the kit. Got a pair of scissors. Put 
She said, here, catch. Yeah. <laughs> Drop your refill in. And ha ha, we have found spring. Spring has two ends on it. One's fatter than the other. I don't know if you can see it up here. One end of the spring is uh, much fatter than the other end. Always put the fat end at the bottom. That way uh, it'll seat in there a little bit better. Drop your refill in, make sure you're hitting the spring. And pull your th thing off and there you have your pen assembled. There we go. Again, this is oil slick diamond cast, and this is the Bullseye Apollo 180 uh, rollerball with brass um, appointments and a Pilot G2 refill.